Okay, so the Bible says that um, when, when they asked Jesus to teach them to pray, he, he told them, he asked them, he said, he said, when you pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What was Jesus teaching them here? He was teaching them the protocol of prayer. He was teaching them that when you come into the presence of God, the first thing you do is to acknowledge who God is. And you're acknowledging him, not look, you are not my mate. You are God in heaven. You are God from heaven. You are higher than me. You are exalted. You are it, 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 it emphasizing position. From that first line, he's saying, when you pray, say, our father. So first of all, the relationship between you and God is the relationship of a father and a daughter or a father and a son. So he's saying, our father. And it's not just my father. It's our father. So your the God's father is not just for you alone. It's for everybody. Ah, but you know, it, knows, it means that God is your father. It means that the person you are coming to is a father. It means that the person you are speaking to is a father. You know that father has loved their children. God is a father. The first baby of our relationship of prayer with God is that we are coming to our father. We are not coming to a, a punisher. We are not coming to a wicked boss. We are not coming to somebody who doesn't love us. We, came, we are coming to somebody who is a source. The word father there means source. It means Abba. It means that in, in, in those days, it was impossible for you to call God. They didn't know how to call God father. The scribes and the Pharisees, they knew God by Elohim. They knew God by Adonai. They knew God by all those names. They knew him as Yahweh. They knew him as Jehovah. But they didn't understand the relationship between him and them as father. They couldn't get the relationship as father. So what Jesus Christ taught us here, he said the first thing, you know, when you pray is to know that you're coming to a father. Hallelujah. We're coming to our father this morning. He is father. Hallelujah. He is father. Our father. Our father. Our source. The one from whom I've come. And I'm going to be praying as I'm teaching you. So as I'm praying, you understand what I'm doing. You know, our father who art in heaven. I am coming to you this morning, my father. I thank you, Lord, because you are my father. I thank you because I came from you. My identity is in you. I am from you, Lord, my son. I am so named by you. You are the one who gave me my name. You are the one who created me. My source is in you. My strength is in you. My life comes from you. Without you, I am nothing. I cannot be found outside of you. I came from you, so you are my father. And it is you I worship this morning. It is you I praise. And the Bible says that you say, our father, which art in heaven. So then you go from identity, you go to position. So you know that God is in heaven. He's, he, you are talking to God from heaven. You are, you are talking to God in heaven. He is in heaven. Heaven. So you understand that the dimension from which you are operating in, you know, you are you, you are looking up to him. You are looking up to him. He's not your, he's not on your same level. He's not, you are not talking to somebody who is on your level. You are talking to somebody who is in heaven. So that gives you an idea that, you know, God is in heaven. You, you are worshiping God in heaven. You are praying to God in heaven. And that gives you an idea that God is supreme and God is superior and that God is, is high up there. You know, even though he's a father, even though he's your, he's your dad, even though he loves you, don't mix it up. Don't forget the fact that even though he's your father, he is God in heaven. Yes, he's your father. Yes, he loves you. Yes, he cares for you, but he is in heaven and he controls. You understand? He is supreme. He is superior. He is God. He is God and he deserves your worship. He deserves your being. He, he, he must be honored. He must be hallowed. And that scripture goes on to say, hallowed be thy name. So when you pray and say, Father, my father, my source, my love, my everything, the one from whom I came, our father who art in heaven, father, I recognize you as God. I acknowledge you as God. I declare you are God. You are higher than the highest. You are greater than the greatest. You are better than the best. Oh God, you are the supreme God. You are Elohim. You are Adonai. I worship you this morning. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Father, I praise you because you're deserving of my praise. You are deserving of my worship. Everything that I am comes from you. You are my strength. You are my life. You are my existence. Oh God, this morning I worship you. Hallowed be your name. And then you go on and you're, and you're praising and you're thanking him and you're giving him praise. You understand what I'm saying? And you're saying, God, thank you. You're saying, God, thank you. 
And the Bible says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The next verse, he says, thy kingdom come. Hey, my shatabaya. Then after you've worshipped, after you've praised him, after you've acknowledged that you are from him, after you've said, said thank you, after you've hallowed him, after you've respected him, you've honored him, then you begin to pray. And you say, Lord, thy kingdom come. The first thing you want to concentrate on is not your needs. The first thing you want to concentrate on is not you. You, you want to say, Lord, your kingdom come. You want to say, Lord, your kingdom come come you want to say father your kingdom come your kingdom come my father your, your kingdom come. what does it mean to be what was kingdom mean kingdom means government kingdom means you know the king over a domain so it's not just kingdom for you know not just the word many times when we hear kingdom we think about royalty yes royalty but you know kingdom domain authority government god has a kingdom and that kingdom that he has placed us in is the earth do you understand but we all know that there are forces upon the earth that try to take the kingdom that try to rule so when we are praying we're saying god your kingdom come god your government to be established on the earth. God, we are establishing your kingdom. We're establishing your rule. We're establishing your reign. We're establishing your power. We're establishing your dominion. We're establishing your authority. So God wants us to pray and establish his authority. His kingdom come. His principles, the principles of the kingdom. What is kingdom? Kingdoms have rules. In this kingdom, this is how you do things. This is so you're praying, God, let your authority be upon the earth. Let your will be done. Before we even go to will, let's just over. Kingdom come. Let his government come. Let his ideology come. A kingdom is defined by its ideology. Let the, you know, when the British came to colonize Nigeria, they brought their ideology. They brought their way of dressing. They brought their way of speaking. They brought the way of, of everything. Their laws, their government, everything changed. When you are praying that God's kingdom should come, you are praying let his rulership come. You are praying let his authority come. Please, sisters, just give me five more minutes this morning. I know we're behind time, but I need to teach this. And I know that the enemy doesn't want you to learn it. So please, allow me to teach it, please. So he says, thy kingdom come. So when you're praying that prayer, you begin to pray. You can be praying over the nations. You can be praying over your government. You can be praying. For example, there are PDP and APC primaries going on this in this season. So when you pray, God, let your kingdom come. Father, Lord, God, Almighty in the government, in, in the nations, oh God. Father, in my in my city, in my home, in my business. Father, Lord God Almighty, in my work, in my family, let your kingdom come. Let your ideology come. Father, let your, your, your thoughts, your patterns, Father, let it happen upon the earth. In the name of Jesus, you begin to bring the Lordship of God upon every situation that is around you, everything that is under your influence. You begin to invite his kingdom. You begin to establish his authority. And you begin to say, Lord, let your kingdom come. You're about to take a decision you're saying, Lord, let your kingdom come. And then after you pray that you go to my will, then thy will be done. Thy will be done. This is a place of surrender. This is a place of saying, God, Lord God Almighty, I recognize, Father, that I have my will. But Lord God Almighty, I submit it to you. I submit it to you. There's something I always say. I always say, I said, until God tames you, he cannot use you. You know, God, God doesn't use vessels that are not broken. Hey, God will break you and this is the language of brokenness thy will be done thy will be done you are saying lord i surrender my will oh thy will be done lord i lay it down i lay down my will i lay down my will i know that god almighty that i have an idea of how this thing is to be done lord god almighty i acknowledge that I have my own ideas, but God, I acknowledge your superiority. I declare, oh God, let your will be done. And you're going to pray, you know, for example, Lord, I've been praying for some for a few days now. I've been praying about the abortion laws in the U.S. Because, you know, that burden has just come upon me. I have God, like, every day, every day, millions of babies are sacrificed to the God of Molech, because Molech is the one that determined, that asked the children of Israel to sacrifice their children every day, and it's government for sponsored. The government sponsors, you know, abortion, the death of innocent children, blood sacrifices every day. So for you, I've been praying about it, God, let your will be done. In the name of Jesus, I overturn rules, I overturn decrees, I overturn government rules, I overturn policies, Father, that are anti your will, that are anti God, that are that are funding the system of Babylon. Father, Lord God Almighty, let your will be done. In the name of Jesus. So you can pray about things like that, and you pray about, you, you know, you, you can start from your nation, you can start from your country, you pray, you know, to your, to your city, you pray for your family, you pray for yourself. I say, God, let your will be done. You lay your will down. Father, I know that I want to move into, I want to move to UK. Lord, I want to move to the US, but God, not my will. Your will be done. I know everybody shouts in Nigeria is going crazy, but 
not my will, your will be done. Father, I do not want to be, you do not want to be out of the will of God. I'm telling you, if you're out of the will of God, you're on your own. The worst place to be ever on earth is to be out of the will of God. When you are in the will of God, you are secure. When you are in the will of God, you are immune. When you are in the will of God, you are automatically protected. One day out of the will of God is all the devil needs. One day. Out of the will of God is all the devil needs. You do not want to be found outside his will. So you are praying, Lord, thy will be done. Thy will be done as it is in heaven. Now, when you pray that, then you're going to pray patterns. You begin to pray down patterns. You begin to pray down instructions as it, as it is in heaven. It is not just saying, Father, okay, yes, we have prayed thy kingdom come. We have prayed thy will be done. Then he now goes further as it is in heaven. So there is a pattern. There is a system. There is something God has already designed. There is something God wants. And so you are beginning to pray for instructions here. Father, as it is in heaven, let it be here on earth. As you have done it in heaven, let it be in my life. You know where I'm supposed to be in the next 50 days. You know where I'm supposed to be in the next 50 years. You know where I'm supposed to be. You know where which which company I'm supposed to be working for. You know, Lord God Almighty, which decision I'm supposed to be taking. You know which business I'm supposed to be going into. Father, let it be done as it is in heaven, as you have written of me in the volume of the books. So let it be in the name of Jesus. So that is why you're praying. And you're praying that prayer like that. Let's quickly move on. Hallelujah. And then you go to give us this day. I wish I had time to walk this. Give us this day our daily bread. This is where you pray and you begin to call for the provisions of heaven. You begin to ask God, Father, Lord God Almighty, give me my daily bread. I'm telling you, this part, this scripture tells me that every day there is something a portion for you that has your name written on it. But when you don't pray it and activate it and call it forth, it doesn't come. So your knowledge, your understanding of what this prayer is doing for you this morning is giving you understanding. So whenever you go to the presence of God, you know how to pray. And you know what to demand. You know what to ask for. And you say, Father, give me today my daily bread. I want you to begin to pray right now. Father, I call forth my daily bread. I call forth that which is mine. I call forth that which is allotted to me. Remember last week we talked about allocated portions. We talked about prescribed path. Father, Lord God Almighty. I call for my allotted portions. I call for my allotted portions. I call for my allotted portions. In the name of Jesus, the portions that you have destined for me, that which is written for me today, Every day you supply. Every day you supply. No day goes by without you having a daily bread. Like the Bible said in the, in the, in the, in the, in the book of Exodus, the Bible says that God gave them manna every day. Every day if there was manna. They didn't even have to. It was there. Father, Lord God Almighty, I receive today's manna. Spiritual manna I receive. Mashata baya baya. Intellectual manna I receive. Financial manna, my Father, I receive. Relationship manna I receive. Kashata baya. My health manna, my Father, I receive. Hey, my destiny manna I receive in the name of Jesus. Give us this day our daily bread. Men give unto me. Oh God, you bless the work of my hands. Favor is all around me. In the name of Jesus, the systems are working for me. I embrace today's daily bread. I receive today's daily bread. I walk in today's daily bread. I enjoy the daily bread today. It comes into my hands. Nothing stops it. Everything that stands against it, I move it out of the way. I enter, oh God, into my daily bread. In the name of Jesus, and the next thing he says, forgive us our sins. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin, who, as we forgive those who sin against us. So this way you're going to be praying that Lord God Almighty, in any way I have sinned against you, Father, forgive me. In any way I have hurt you, in any way I've said things that I'm not supposed to say, in any way I've had thoughts that I'm not supposed to think of. Father, I, I acknowledge my humanity. I acknowledge my frailty. I know I am human. Father, please have mercy on me. Forgive me, my Father. Forgive every, and then you're, as you're praying that God should forgive you and have mercy on you, you're pleading the blood of Jesus, you are also forgiving everyone that has hurt against you. So this is where you pray for your relationships and you pray for people. This is what I pray for people. I pray for the members of God's own Diva Club. I pray for, for everybody in my life, my family members, every, everybody. I spend this time, I use it to invest in the lives of people. Father, Lord God Almighty, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, in any way I have, may have hurt anyone that I don't even realize. Lord God Almighty, I pray forgiveness in the name of Jesus as I forgive. I, I, I ask you to forgive me and as you forgive me, Lord, I forgive them in the name of Jesus and anyone has out against me, Father, cause them to forgive me. Father, Lord, I pray for my relationship. I pray, oh God, for my husband. I pray for my daughter. I pray, oh God, for everybody around me, Lord God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, I have good relationships with them. Thank you, Father, for the members of God's own Diva Club. I have good relationships with them. I declare them blessed in them, going out and they're coming in. Everything they do, Lord God Almighty, the blessing is over them. In the name of Jesus, they will not be trapped. Issues that they do not understand will not come near them. And you begin to 
pray like that and you pray and then let's quickly move on oh thank you jesus and then he says lead us not into temptation you know the enemy doesn't just come he doesn't just come to you he studies you he knows that which is your weakness he knows that which trips you he knows that which triggers you he knows the enemy doesn't just come, he's a very intelligent, crafty setter. So when the Bible says, lead us not into temptation, he's saying, God, that temptation that is taking me, hey, Akataba, Father, help me not to walk into it. I pray this one, I always pray very well. Father, lead me not into temptation. Every situation, Lord God Almighty, that is bigger than me. Every situation, my Father, Lord God Almighty, that is, that, Lord God Almighty, I'm susceptible to. Father, Lord God Almighty, help me to overcome it. Help me to see it from a long distance. Father, help me to see it when it's coming that I may avoid it. Lead me not into temptation. Father, that which is too much for me, then let me walk into it. Father, today I jump and pass. Every temptation, every wickedness of the wicked, every plan and purpose of the enemy that they have led for me, every trap that is in my way. Father, Lord God Almighty, I, I jump over it. I decree and I declare, lead me not into temptation. I overcome every temptation. I overcome every temptation in the name of Jesus. And he says, but deliver us from evil. Ah, my sotobaya, I taught you, I said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will not walk into evil. This is where you begin to pray the spirit. Deliver me from evil. Every evil in my life, every evil that is planned for me today, everything that the enemy has planned, every script that has been written, every Every gang up in the realm of the spirit, every at attempt of Satan, Father, Lord God Almighty, to, to trap me, everything that is programmed into my future. Today, I send the words of the Lord ahead. I declare in the name of Jesus, I am delivered from evil. Today, Lord, I pray, deliver me from evil. Every evil around me, every evil in my future, every evil in my body, everything that they are waiting for a particular time for it to spring from. Father, Lord God Almighty, I go ahead and I destroy it in the name of Jesus. I declare I'm delivered from evil. Every evil. Father, Lord, anybody that I'm going to come across today that is a messenger of evil, this morning by your spirit, I terminate their program. I declare, I declare it will not stand. Deliver me from evil in the name of Jesus. And then he says, the power and the glory forever and ever again. And then you worship God. And if there's any other thing you now want to pray, you can now pray it. If there's any other matter in your, in your, in your, in, in your heart, you cannot pray. But I'm telling you, if you follow this pattern of prayer, ah, yata, ba, yata, you would have prayed for one hour you won't even realize it. You were praying for two hours, you will not even realize I'm telling you, following this pattern of prayer is powerful. And this is the formula that Jesus gave for prayer. And then I love the place where he said in verse 9, he says, so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep seeking and you will find. Keep knocking and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who knocks, the door is opened unto them. Sisters, this is the pattern of prayer. Keep praying. Keep praying, your prayers are working. I assure you, God is the God that answers prayers. The Bible says, Psalm 65, verse 2, all to the, oh God that answers prayers, unto you shall all flesh come. God is a prayer answering God. And as you go about your week, as you learn this pattern of prayer, you begin to adopt it in your life. As you begin to pray, as God begins to emphasize prayers to us, as you begin to wake up in the morning to pray, as you begin to rise up before, days to, 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 before the day is done to pray, I pray in the name of Jesus. May the Lord answer you from heaven. May the Lord go with you this week. May you prosper. May everything that is yours, that's written for you, for today. May he come to you. May God's kingdom come upon the earth through you. May his will be done in your life. May you surrender your life, your heart, your soul, your spirit, everything to him. In the name of Jesus, may you never be found outside of his will. May, be, may you be securely planted in his will. In the name of Jesus, may God work all things together for your good. May the lines fall onto you in pleasant places. May your steps be ordered by God this week in the name of Jesus and I pray as you ask you will receive as you seek you will find and as you knock the door shall be opened unto you so let it be in the name of the Father in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit amen and amen and amen God bless you my sisters oh shut up God bless you my sisters have a wonderful 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 victorious day victorious week in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Mama. Pray. God bless you, pray, Mama. Pray, pray. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Sisters. Amen. Amen. I'm so sorry about the network. I have no clue what happened.
I do what I do. I don't, I don't understand, but I'm glad that God gave us a way and uh, we still were able to pray. Thank you, sisters, for joining. I love you all. Thank you, Mama. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for this prayer guide. It's super. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, everyone. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.